of St. James the Less Episcopal Church. We are glad to have you with us. And uh, this morning we'll be doing morning prayer, hopefully with hymns. <laughs> we think that'll work as well as sermon. So glad to have you with us today. Our service begins with morning prayer right to Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If then we have been raised in Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. And now we will begin with our prelude. Uh, Reggie recorded this for us, and glad to have it. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouths to proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia! The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia! To begin with this morning, we will say, Christ our Passover. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia! Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia! Alleluia! The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia! The psalm appointed for the day is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. 
All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. For those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied, their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, who you are my portion and my cup, it is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's lessons are from the New Testament and from the Gospel. A reading from 1 Peter 1, 3-9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if you now, for a little while, you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire, <coughs> may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response, Canticle 15, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number 180, He is Risen, He is Risen. Feast. 
Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you give forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord! But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here in my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Yesterday I felt a bit like Thomas. I went out, out of quarantine, out of isolation. I went out despite the fears and the worries, and I went out because we needed to get some more essentials, some food. We hadn't been grocery shopping in two weeks, and with two teenage girls, it's something we need. Now, was Thomas on a food run, too? Because of refrigeration, um, like I said, we hadn't done it in weeks, but they were having to do it very regularly. But I think similar feelings were there. We know that Thomas wasn't hidden away with the other apostles when Jesus appeared. We know that he was out. Was he in disguise? Was he fearful? Not so long ago, here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, it was illegal to wear a mask in public. And now it's not only recommended, it's the new norm. When I got home, I took off my shoes before I came in the house. So many new ways of doing things. So different. And the disciples, who for three years had handled crowds and were in the middle of so much happening, they're now hiding away from the Romans and the religious leaders, and Thomas goes out into it. And I'm trying to envision my family telling me when I got home that something world-changing had taken world-changing had taken place in that hour and change that I was gone. How would I have responded that day? God calls us all to faith, and God wants us to be part of that faith life now. Now, doubts are natural, and they are part of the process for faith to grow. To build up our faith muscles, we exercise our doubts. Exercise or exercise to uh, get rid of them like a demon. God doesn't want our want us to stay in our doubts, but I do think God understands. Jesus is very patient with Thomas, inviting him even to stick his fingers in his hands and his hand in his side. I don't see Jesus being facetious here. He's taking it as simple a, a place as it needs to be for Thomas. Here, Thomas, check it out. And notice Thomas believes much sooner and doesn't have to do the tangible touching and probing. 
Each and every one of our doubts are our own. We all have things that we believe easier than others. As Frederick Buechner said, I mean, it was made famous um, as the beginning quote to start a prayer for Owen Meany. Without somehow destroying me in the process, how could God reveal himself in a way that would leave no room for doubt? If there were no room for doubt, there would be no room for me. Our doubts are uniquely our own, and God works through them to get us where we need to be. And that's what maybe I think Peter is getting at in our New Testament reading for the day. And I've included about half of that reading, and I want to pick it apart phrase by phrase from 1 Peter 1. You are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. And Peter's telling us that no matter how things are now, and especially now for us, that God is with us, molding us in preparation for eternity. Now we are so fixated on timing, saving it or wasting it, prolonging it because it's precious. But when we enter into eternity, time is meaningless. From Amazing Grace, there's that line, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. In eternity, we have just as much time on the first day as we do a thousand years into it. It never ends. Going back to Peter, if in this you rejoice, even if for now, for a little while, you have to suffer various trials, so that the, through the genuineness of your faith, we go through things, trials of our faith, and in so doing, our faith is refined and strengthened. Now, do I see God causing these trials? No. No, just no. Too much to get into all of that today. But think on this. When life hands you lemons, it's life handing them to you, not God. But God helps you make the lemonade out of the stuff that life hands all of us. In those instances, and we all have them, we can grow. We don't suffer so that we can grow. We all suffer because of life. That's what life can be. We are all waging a war, mostly unseen and unknown. Ian McLaren reminds us, be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Going on again with Peter. The genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire. Now Hebrews reminds us, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Our faith is refined in the crucible of life. And our faith is a learned response. When Steph and I have faced hard days together, I knew I could count on two things. I could count on God, and I could count on her. It's like calluses that develop on my hands from hard work. They come through work, and they only come through work. And faith is like that. It's easy to say that we believe things when times are easy. But true faith, genuine faith, comes from refinement by trial. Our faith may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. First Peter again. We would not want to be found wanting when Jesus comes again. I once saw a button in a toy store, a comedy a joke shop, that said, look busy, Jesus is coming. But in our faith, it's so much more than looking busy. Our faith is real when it has been worked and tried, when we face the insurmountable or the impossible with a calm resolve that God is with us. Now, will God change things for us? Probably not. But in the chemo wards and in the prayer closets, in the ICUs and in the IOUs, and all of that, God is with us. And when Jesus comes again, we want to praise and glory with sincerity and joy when Jesus shows up. First Peter again. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. We wait in patience. We would have to be patient. We've been waiting for a hundred generations for Christ's return. But, he will find, but will he find us faithful when he comes again? We have not seen him, but we love him. But my whole life, and maybe a hundred generations on from now, uh, people will still be looking with anticipation for his return and the indescribable and glorious joy Peter talks about. 
and the last phrase, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And here we have it, our reward. We keep the faith and the outcome of that faith, the salvation of our very souls. It's the only thing that we can take with us, the only thing that is ever truly our own. Every single thing you think you own, every single relationship that is so important, every single moment and place and thing that you cherish will one day be stripped away. All that you have is your soul. And friends, like Thomas, our faith is tested. We all face trials. We all have doubts. We're all invited to take a step further into faith. We're invited to take those trials and transform them by applying our faith. Do we choose to see through the dark and the shadows and envision the light? Do we embrace the light in the midst of the storm? If we do, that's our choice. If we do, that is faith. One of the strange things that our technology has enabled that now is a hindrance is my phone. It's designed for me to look at, excuse me, it is designed for it to look at me, literally. And through recognizing my face, it lets me into my phone. And yesterday in that quick trip to the store, I had my mask on like we all should be doing. And while I was wearing it, I remember I had to check the list a couple times and I would put it up to my face and it couldn't see through my mask. Um, I got so used to picking it up and not thinking about it, it had become a muscle memory. And I don't think about it because I don't have to think about it. It just happens. But with not with my mask on, it's designed for times without a mask. And that's what we're getting at today. We are not designed to live in our doubts. We're designed to live in faith with God we can take off those protective layers of our doubts and we can see things for real as they are, eye to eye, face to face. Friends, in these uncertain and fear-filled days, have faith. Have faith in the one who loves you through your doubts and in your doubts, God has faith in you that one day your faith will be genuine. God loves you so much that God's willing to play the long game and works patiently with us, even through our doubts. Thanks be to God. Amen. In response and affirmation of our faith, let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He, was su he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and ju to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us sing hymn number 199. Come, ye faithful, rise the stream. Thank you. 
Let us begin the prayers today. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Day Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn in the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A collect for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen a collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and returns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely testing, trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you from all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we lift up our intercessions and thanksgivings. I know that uh, Bob Brown and uh, um, uh, Madge Carter both have birthdays today, and we are excited for them. We want to keep the Martins in our prayers. All those uh, health care workers, and there's been many who have been mentioned to me about uh, needing our prayers during these times, know that we are lifting them up. As you lift those up to God, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. And then the 
closing, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, are, we your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for your good ma goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the, the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And once again, we have uh, something from Reggie to let us head out today. Thank you for being with us. Let us know if you have anything that you need or some worries. It's good to have you with us. And uh, God bless. Thank you.